Hello, welcome to the Martial Arts Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm going to inform you on over 100 things you must know about Linux. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So let's begin. So Linux is a kernel, right? Linux is essentially a kernel and not an operating system. The term Linux is commonly used to refer to operating systems based on the Linux kernel, such as Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, Mint, and so much more. Linux, you know, has its origin in Unix, right? The Linux kernel was developed by Linux Torvalds, a Finnish computer scientist. It was officially released in 1991 under the GNU, uh, the general public license, right? It was a hobby project. He he was working on while still a student at the University of Helsinki. He was working on a project based on Minix, which is a Unix based operating system. Linux, I mean, or <laughs> Linux, Linus, right? L I N U S. Linus never intended to make money out of Linux. So, as a strong advocate for open source software, Linux, ha you know, never intended commercialized Linux. In fact, as a hobby project, Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, never envisioned making a profit from his groundbreaking operating system. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Please take a moment right now, hit that subscribe button and the like button. So hundreds of Linux distributions currently, you know, there are over 600 Linux distributions ranging from popular distributions or distros such as Ubuntu, Debian, and Fedora to newer distributions such as Rocky and Alma Linux. So the vastness of Linux code, as of November 2023, the Linux kernel has over 36 million lines of code in accordance with the latest stable versions available at that time is Linux kernel 6.5. The vastness of code is due to the fact that the Linux kernel is responsible for a wide range of tasks, including managing the hardware, memory, and processes of a computer system. And Linux is written in the C language, right? The Linux kernel is predominantly written in C and hosted on GitHub. It enjoys an impressive 160,000 stars with over 14,700 uh, contributors to its code. The first kernel version was the uh, 0 0.01 contained about 10,000 lines of code, right? And Tux is the official mascot of Linux. So the official mascot of Linux kernel is a penguin character called Tux. The idea was inspired by Linus encounter with a pigeon at a national zoo during his trip to Australia in 1993. This is a commonly used logo for Linux and is depicted in various graphical styles. The first Linux GUI distribution, you know, one of the first Linux distribution is the soft landing Linux system shortened as SLS. It was the first Linux distro to include the X window system or GUI, which is the graphical user interface. It was released in 1992 and was the predecessor to Slackware, which was released in July 16, 1993 and is supported to date. So Debian, the mother of many Linux distributions. Debian was among the first GNU Linux distributions to be, you know, community driven. Debian 0.01 was the first Debian released and was made publicly available on September 15, 1993. It first stable version, Debian 1.1, was released on June 17, 1996. So Debian is considered the mother of many Linux distributions. Popular Debian based Linux distributions include Ubuntu, MX Linux, uh, Deepin, Pop OS, Zorin OS, and Kali Linux to mention a few examples. The first commercial Linux distribution, the, uh, you guys are going to come at me for this, the Wigdrasel. Wigdrasel, uh, YGG Drasel is the first commercial Linux distribution and was released on live CD format on 8th. December 1992, right? December 8th, 1992, offering a unique blend of open source software and use and a user friendly interface for sale, making a significant milestone in the history of Linux. So Linux dominates in supercomputers. It commands a market share of 48% as of June 2022. In addition, it powers nearly 90% of the cloud and is the most widely used operating system on popular cloud platforms, including Microsoft Azure and AWS. As a result, Linux has become the operating system of choice for pushing the boundaries of scientific and technological innovation in the supercomputing area. So Linux powers a multitude of devices. So nowadays, Linux runs on almost anything, servers, desktops, smartphones, smartwatches, etc. right? 
Almost every handheld device has a Linux kernel at the core of its operating system. Linux open source nature allows developers to customize it for different devices and software needs, making it a widely used operating system in the world. Linux dominates web servers by 2023, so 96.3% of the top 1 million web servers were reported to run on Linux. The Android operating system is based on a highly modified version of the Linux kernel. Many websites you visit daily are hosted on servers running Linux due to its stability and security, making it a top choice for web hosting companies as it can handle a heavy load of website visitors without slowing down. Linux on every major space station, right? So Linux is used in every major space station, including NASA, International Space Station, ISS, and private space companies such as SpaceX. Its reliability and open source adaptability make it an ideal choice for critical systems, ensuring smooth operations and support astronauts in their endeavors beyond Earth boundaries, right? And the market share of Linux, right? Linux has gained ground as the third most popular desktop operating system with a 2.92% market share as of October 2023, according to State Counter, right? Beyond desktops, Linux reach extends further, serving as the backbone for staggering 90% of the world's cloud infrastructure. Its versatility, open source nature, and robust performance have made it a prominent player both on personal computers and in the vast network of servers empowering the digital services we rely on daily. Now, the acquisition of Red Hat. Uh, in July 2019, IBM finalized its acquisition of Red Hat, marking a significant milestone with a hefty investment of nearly $34 billion. Red Hat holds a prominent position as the leading enterprise Linux distributor uh, in the server market. So now we have Ubuntu, right? The global leader in Linux desktop adoption. So Ubuntu status as the most popular Linux desktop globally can be largely attributed to its clean, simple, and intuitive user interface, ensuring a seamless user experience. So when Torvalds declined an offer from Apple, a lot of people don't know that. In the early 2000s, a significant moment in tech history unfolded when Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple Inc., extended an offer to Linus Torvalds, the creator of the Linux kernel, inviting him to join Apple's team and contribute to the development of OS X. However, Torvalds declined this enticing proposal. This decision ultimately solidified Torvalds' dedication to the open source principles of Linux and its community. As he continued to lead the development of the widely acclaimed Linux kernel. So there has been a rivalry of Microsoft and Linux, right? You know, if you can't, if you're not going to join our team, we're going to come after you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, Microsoft waged war against Linux in the early 2000s, seeking to stop its spread and usage. It incurred a staggering $421 million in the process. Nowadays, the two operating systems are no longer locked in battle. And in fact, there's been more collaboration between the two in recent years. Then there's the integration between Linux and Windows. So. Windows subsystem for Linux WSL is a feature in, in, you know, in Windows that allows developers to run Linux on a Windows environment without having a dual boot or run a virtual machine. So the SQL Server 2017 was the first SQL version to run on both Windows and Linux environments. You can run other Windows native apps and games using Wine, W-I-N-E, which is a compatibility layer that lets users run Windows applications on Linux. Then we have Linux is extremely versatile. So modern Linux desktop distros provide applications that allow you to perform virtually any operation, including software development, browsing, graphical design, well, you know, or graphic design, video editing, gaming, entertainment, and much more. The Linux trademark dispute, right? Linux trademark dispute. A guy named William Della uh, registered the name Linux and demanded royalty for using its name and mark. However, the contentious situation was ultimately resolved when Della uh, agreed to transfer the trademark to Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux. 
This transition secured Linux open source status and ensured that its name and mark remained freely accessible, allowing the Linux community to continue flourishing and innovating without hindrance. There was an asteroid named in honor of Linus Torvalds. So Linus Torvalds, the renowned creator of Linux kernel, received a unique and celestial honor when an asteroid was named after him. This astronomical recognition symbolizes his significant contributions to the world of open source software and technology. Uh, we have Linux visual effects in Titanic and Avatar. So uh, for those who doubt Linux, Linux capabilities in animation, consider this. The Oscar winning visual effects of James Cameron's legendary film Titanic were crafted using Linux powered machines. Even more impressively, Avatar, Cameron's groundbreaking 3D cinematic masterpiece, marked the last movie to be entirely developed on a Linux platform using free and open source software, the FOSS applications. Now, the cost of redeveloping the Linux kernel, so redeveloping version 2.6.0 of the Linux kernel in a traditional non-open source way was estimated to cost around $612 million in 2004. Another study in 2006 funded by the European Union suggested that redoing version 2.6.8 would be even more expensive at about $1.14 billion. This estimates show how much money could be saved by using the open source approach of developing Linux. Now let's get into 25 Kali Linux penetration testing tools, the top one, right? We have Nmap, Linus, Fierce, OpenVast, Nikto, WP uh, Scan, Skipfish, uh, CMS Map, uh, Fluxian, Aircrack NG, Kismet Wireless, Wireshark, John the Ripper, THC Hydra, Find My Hash, Rainbow Crack, Metasploit Framework, Social Engineering Toolkit, uh, B. Uh, Yernsenia, DHC Pig, Funk Load, Slow HTTP Test, uh, Innuender, Inundator, <laughs> Inundator, <laughs> T50, right? Now let's get into more of these. So uh, the Linux kernel was has around 27.8 million lines of code in its Git uh, repository. In 2019, 100% of the world's supercomputers run on Linux. Android holds the highest OS market share with 38.9%. 96.3% of the world's top 1 million servers run on Linux. Over, you know, of the 20 of the top 25 websites in the entire world, only two websites aren't running on Linux. So Linux has a lot of usage, right? 85% of all smartphones are based on Linux. The Linux market share on desktop is 1.89%. Linux holds a 1.19% market, uh, percent market share of operating systems in Europe. In the US, the operating system market share for Linux is 0.96%. In the UK, the Linux market share drops to 0.62%. In 2018, the number of Linux games available on Steam reached 4060 uh 95% of the servers that run in the world uh world's top 1 million domains are powered by Linux in 2018 25.3% of professional developers use Linux in 2019 54.1% of professional developers use Linux 83.1% uh, of developers claim that they prefer to work on Linux as opposed to other operating systems now let's get into some of these demographic right of users using Ubuntu, 18.04 LTS, 22.3% are in the US, 59% of people using Ubuntu use the English language, 98% of AMD64 OS architecture. In 2016, 10.5% of developer population were women. Of the Linux kernel Git population, 9% are women. The countries that use Linux the most are India, Russia, and Cuba. Utah and Canada in the US prefer Linux to other states. Now. Let's get into code statistics, right? System MD now has nearly 1.3 million lines of code. There are nearly 75,000 code commits to the kernel during 2019. The top contributors by email domain were Intel and Red Hat. The top contributing into, uh, individuals were Linus Torvalds with 3.19% of the commits. There were 4,189 different contributors overall in 2019. System MD had 43,000 commits in 2019. The top contributor was Yu Watsunabe with 26.94% of the commits. So, you know, if you're a programmer, you're really going to want to learn the C language. So let's get into more of the li these, these Linux uh, facts. So 90% of Hollywood special effects are made on Linux. 90% of public cloud workload runs on Linux. Every major space program uses Linux. 96.3% of the world's top 
1 million servers run on Linux. Uh, Sony's PS4 runs on Orbis OS, which is developed on a Linux-based kernel. In 2018, 75.16 of smartphones worldwide ran on Linux. Ubuntu's default display server was switched from x.org server to Wayland in Ubuntu 17. Point ten for improved performance, security, and support for modern graphics hardware and features. So Ubuntu Software Center was replaced by Genome Software in Ubuntu 16.4 LTS, offering a modern and streamlined interface for discovering, installing, and managing software applications on Ubuntu desktop. Ubuntu's ZFS file system support uh, was introduced in Ubuntu 16.4 LTS, providing advanced features such as snapshots, copy on write, and data integrity checks for improved data protection and storage management. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment featured a global menu bar and HUD, uh, which is heads up display for accessing application menus and commands using keyboard shortcuts, improving productivity and screen space efficiency. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment including the uni included the Unity Dash, which is a unified search interface for launching applications, searching files, and accessing online services, providing users with quick and intuitive access to information. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment included the Launcher, which is a sidebar for pinning uh, favorite applications and, uh, and accessing uh, workspace management features, providing users with quick access to commonly used tools and utilities. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment featured the Unity Spread, which is a workspace overview mode for managing open windows and applications across multiple virtual desktops, enhancing multitask Asking in productivity. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment supported Unity lenses and scopes, providing users with contextual search results and content recommendations from various sources such as applications, files, and online services. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment included the Unity panel, which is a top panel for displaying system indicators, notifications, and menus, providing users with quick access to system settings and status information. Uh, Unity's uh, Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment featured the Unity Launcher API, allowing developers to create custom indicators, quick lists, and application launchers for integration with the Unity desktop environment. Uh, Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment supported Compiz as its window manager, providing desktop effects, animations, and window management features such as window uh, snapping, expo, and scale for a visually appealing user experience. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment included the Unity Control Center, which is a centralized settings application for configuring system preferences, appearance settings, and hardware devices, providing users with customization options and accessibility features. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment featured the Unity Greeter, which is a login screen for authenticating users and selecting desktop sessions, providing a secure and user-friendly login experience for Ubuntu users. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment included the Unity Lock Screen, which is a screen locking interface for securing user sessions and preventing unauthorized access to the system, supporting password, fingerprint, and smart card authentication methods. Ubuntu Unity 7 desktop environment supported the Unity 2D Session, a lightweight desktop environment for low-end hardware and virtualized environments, providing users with a re uh, responsive and efficient computing experience. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment included the Unity Tweak tool, which is a graphic utility for customizing Unity desktop settings, appearances, themes, icon packs, and window behaviors, providing advanced users with fine grain control over their desktop environment. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment included the Unity Smart Scopes feature, providing intelligent search results and recommendations from local and online sources such as files, applications, music, videos, news, and social media, enhancing the Ubuntu desktop experience. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment featured the Unity Web Apps integration, allowing users to integrate web services and online applications with the Unity desktop environment, providing seamless access to web-based content and notifications. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment supported the Unity Test Runner, a testing framework for automated testing of Unity desktop components, ensuring stability, performance, and compatibility across different hardware configurations and software environments. Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment included the unit unity remote debugger a debugging tool for remote debugging of unity desktop applications providing developers with real-time insights and diagnostics of troubleshooting and optimizing optimizing software performance 
Ubuntu's Unity 7 desktop environment supported the Unity Performance Profiler, a profiling tool for analyzing and optimizing the performance of Unity desktop components, identifying bottlenecks, memory leaks, and CPU usage patterns for improving responsiveness and efficiency. That's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. See you on the next video.